Away from our top stories, the Nigerian equities market is currently trading in negative territory despite yesterday's gain. Usoro Esier, head of research at Greenwich Trust, joins me in the studio for a midday market update. Thank you so much, Usoro. Pleasure to have you on the program as always. Thank you. We're looking at big caps under pressure at a Nigerian stock exchange in midday trade. Now, we saw the market also taking a breather yesterday. And yesterday was just actually the very first time the market recorded a gain since the beginning of the year. Now, we know there are a number of headwinds that investors are keeping watch, closely watching. I suppose key among them is the election. But beyond that, is there any good news? Is there any, what, what, what catalyst, what could spur this market back into sustained positive territory? Well, um, two things. First uh, would be, the fact that most of these um, stocks, equities um, from different sectors, banking and uh, FMCG in particular, are uh, trading at huge discounts to um, where their emerging market peers are. And um, you know these um, stocks took, these two sectors took a heavy beating last year. So for bargain hunters that are looking for discounts to enter these stocks um, at a relatively cheap prices, this is the right time. Between now up until March, um, you would have opportunities to take positions. However, you rightly said um, the headwinds from macroeconomic factors, um, crude oil prices being um, dom the dominant one is um, really a, a problem because for foreign investors, the crude oil prices um, directly have a link to our exchange rate. And as long as the fear of the exchange rate um, continuing its, um, its spiral downwards to a region of, say, 220 to 250, they would want to wait to see a, a bit of stability in that exchange rate before they come in heavily and take positions. Yeah. What does that leave companies, stocks like Seplat, Uwandu? We had you know, very good successful stories from these companies last year. We, of, of course, still have the local content where we saw uh, indigenous players now you know, in the, playing in the big league upstream. So where does that leave these companies in terms of profitability, profit margins, and you know, the overall outlook for uh, uh, exploration in 2015? Well, as it is, um, they are, they're basically their destiny is strongly tied to the price of uh, crude oil. As it is now, it's hovering around $45 per barrel. Um, a lot of these um, indigenous um, upstream companies uh, came in to the came in and took off assets from uh, the, the the majors in the marginal fields, and we know that the cost of uh, drilling from those fields uh, tend to slightly be higher because of disruptions and um, issues with um, the the communities. So um, it's definitely going to affect output and forecast. So the um, turnover for those companies uh, definitely our models are going to be tweaked downwards uh, because you do not expect them to be able to meet uh, revenues they, they had projected, projected yeah, earlier on. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So what about bank stocks? Because they're still, they still remain the most liquid on the Nigerian Stock Exchange you know, in terms of traded volumes on a daily basis. basis. We know that most of the regulatory headwinds have been targeted at these banks. And of course, everybody has to adjust their belts, not just at the fiscal yeah. level, but even the banks themselves. So, and of course, we're also hearing talk about lower earnings in the first quarter. So that, I suppose, has could, you know, could have left the investors disenchanted. But for the banks, what names would you put your money on? What names could investors look to, perhaps even as a safe haven? Uh, for, well, uh, for safe haven and a volatile market, it's um, very tricky. However, I would uh, place my bets around the mid-tier. Um, banks like your FCMB right now are trading um, at uh, almost uh, 2.5 times book. and. Um, uh, that's a PE and um, 0 0.3 uh, price to book. Uh, a, a bank like uh, UBA, um, that's very attractive at that price. Even a bank like Skybank, um, these these uh, mid-tier banks are definitely um, undervalued, in my opinion. And you think investors can look past the headwinds, past the dark clouds at the moment, even foreign investors, and put their, their money in these stocks? Yeah, because investors would look at where those um, stocks would probably tank in price. And I think that um, give or take uh, another 20% depreciation maximum for those three counters, I think they've almost bottomed out. Yeah. Okay, what about your expectations for overall market performance in the first quarter of the year? We have, you know, I guess this is where most of the headwinds are concentrated. We're going to have earnings, we're going to have the elections. Of course, there's still the insecurity situation in the northeast part of the country. Uh, well, you already saw, because of the fears from um, both the domestic and um, the external um, headwinds, um, you already saw what happened last week. Last week, the market did 13% negative. Um, it's definitely uh, double-digit negative we're expecting for Q1. 
However, that's expected even on the back of just elections. Um, the good story for equities would come um, H2 this year, not, not, not H1 in my opinion. And um, it's only investors that are, have triggers for stocks that have reached what they believe are their um, support levels. And they can actually take, um, take positions at those levels and exit. Uh, so you just see intermittent bull busts. Okay. When you see a rally for, for um, stocks that investors feel, OK, it's really at a very good discount. Yeah. What about consumer goods, uh, the brewery sector? Well, the, the situation in the northeast part of the country, we haven't seen an improvement. So market share there, or any hope for increasing market share there uh, this year mm. still remains very slim. So I suppose competition is going to be a lot heated in 2015. But in terms of profit margins, do they stand a chance of at least improving that? For the brewery sector, just coming from a consolidation, so for the mass market um, beer that came for st stocks like um, like your Nigerian breweries that just rounded up its consolidation, for the mass market beer, you'd expect um, their sales to uh, continue uh, rising, even though it will be lower do lo lower single digits. For the um, for the premium segment of their of their um, of their market, I think they would actually have um, a decline, also single digit. So um, all in all, you'd probably see a slight decline um, Q1, even though uh, elections and um, celeb uh, and uh, coming off from a festive season, you expect sales to uh, be on the up. But Q1 is not really their strongest um, um, quarter. What about uh, at, at the regulatory front? We now have uh, an acting uh, director general at the Securities and Exchange Commission, the outgoing uh, DJ has left. In terms of how the market is going to be uh, propelled this year, how it's, in terms of regulation, do you think that is going to be, or that is an additional concern for investors? Well, for that, they, that, that's, uh, that will be on the back burner. That, that is a concern, but it's not a prominent one as, as uh, faced with what um, the other headwinds that um, they're looking at right now. They'll probably factor that in when you'd see more of a, a rally in the market, and that's probably going to be H2. All right, next thank year. you so much, Usora, yeah. for sharing that perspective yeah. with us. Pleasure having you on the program. Usora, SEA Head of Research at Greenwich Trust, uh, looking at the midday equities markets here in Nigeria, still in negative territory.